Hello! What's going on, guys? It is Deltray, and we are back with some more Fire Emblem Awakening Lunatic Classic. Last time, we participated in a tournament of raw strength and finally earned the aid of the Eastern and Western Khans of Regna Ferox. And we began our journey to turn a small boy into a killing machine. I gotta say, I was kinda surprised that some people didn't like Donnie Boy. A little bit surprising to me, I thought that those kind of slow start growth oriented characters were usually sort of fan favorites in a way. I know a lot of people like Mozu. Personally, I like Mozu, I like Donald. I'm cool with characters like that. They're fun to use to me. I don't know why, maybe you guys have noticed, but I don't always just use the best of the best. It can be a lot of fun for me personally to take somebody who sucks and turn them into a good character. Anyways, today we are going to go on to chapter 5, probably the final. Well, I say final, but probably the last ridiculously tough map in the early part of the game. I don't know, I just, I really don't like this one, and we'll see why, I'm sure. I don't know if it's this bad on lower difficulties, but on Lunatic, oh my lord, this is nightmarish. Lunatic doesn't really do this next map justice, it's just, it's so much worse than that, honestly. Chapter 5 annoyance aside though, it's been a lot of fun playing through this one again so far. Getting to use a lot of characters that I don't normally use. I can't believe how good Sumia is, though. This is unheard of. This is actually some kind of glitch, surely. Like, this should not be. I can't believe it. And you guys did confirm. Yeah, she has gotten strength every single time. Every single time on a 45 percenter. So, uh, yeah, I think, needless to say, Sumia is going to be used. I don't know if... I don't know what we're doing with Heyu still. I haven't really determined that. And I think if you saw that live stream, you already know we gotta use Muriel. So if you were worried about her, nah, she's in. Anyways, there were some comments on the last part, and I guess we can start with an informative one, or like a... Yeah, let's let's use the word informative, I guess. So I saw somebody ask why I wasn't using Lisa on the previous maps, and it got a decent amount of people who seemed like they agreed with it, so I thought I would explain that. The reason I didn't use Lissa is because, if you'll notice on the previous maps, on Chapter 4 and uh, Donnie's Paralogue, right? We, we were attacking with everybody basically every single turn, particularly in Chapter 4. You probably could have squeezed her in on Chapter... Uh, on Donald's Paralogue, right? That probably would have worked out. But on Chapter 4, I would have had to redo literally everything because if we needed every single character to kill the enemies that we faced, in a reasonable amount of time, right? Then by sacrificing an extra attack for Lissa, that means that we cannot kill all the enemies that we need to. And if we cannot kill all the enemies that we need to, it means that we need to turtle up in a corner and continuously let them come to us over and over and over again. Because think about it like this. If if my combat units, like if Hey you Krom, Sully, I think we bought Virion and Muriel, right? If all of them died, not Sully, Sumia, if all of them died, though, to the enemies that were left alive, then Lisa dies, like, twice over because she's incredibly frail. And she can't contribute to actually killing the enemies. Whereas, with the rest of our characters, we can just we can just use a healing item, right? And still be able to attack on the enemy base. Whereas, if we bring Lissa up, that means more enemies are surviving. Which means the only thing we can do about that is allow Frederick to kill more things, which we don't really want to do because getting experience on other people would be nice if we're going to use them naturally, right? or run away a whole bunch. And that's not really fun to play or watch, in my opinion. Not to mention it's not as safe either, because, again, we have to kill the same amount of enemies with less attackers. And since we only had, what, six characters that we could bring, I felt like it was more important to have people who could deal damage rather than anything else. And it worked out, so <laughs> that was my reasoning behind that. You don't always need a healer. I'm sure you guys who watched the Conquest playthrough are more than familiar with my mentality on that. I actually don't think we broke a single healing staff in all of Fates. Like, not a single one for the entire game. It's just not as important as you think it is. Sometimes. Sometimes. Not always. But if you can clear a map quickly or have enough healing items, then it's really not that important to be able to heal with, like, a dedicated healer, you feel me? Professor Colorado in response to Flavia, I assume, says... We don't involve comrades or kin to prevent blood feuds. Actual royalty from foreign countries, though, on the other hand, are totally fair game. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen in an international incident? Uh, you know what? Shut up, man. <laughs> Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, I'll be honest. Seems to be like they're adding more problems, adding more fuel to the fire by doing things this way. And then Onibro comes in and says, well, they aren't much for politics, are they? And you know what? Yeah, there you go. They said that much. Come on now. Why are we, why are we wasting time on this? The game explained it. Come on. 
I know I saw another comment related to this too. Pointing out the fact that everybody who wasn't Marth was actually aligned with Regna Parox. I couldn't find the comment, so I'm sorry if that was you, but I know I saw it. I know I saw it. Just because I don't throw a comment up on screen doesn't mean I didn't read the comment. I read them all, but... That one, on the other hand, broke me a little bit, because it's like, yeah, wait a minute, hold on. It sounds like you guys just fed us some bullshit. Sounds like you didn't have too many people on your side there, Flavia. Maybe they didn't have a whole lot of faith in you. Steady says, Glory is my favorite food. Now you say that, Deltre, but there's a brand of canned veggies that goes by the name of Glory. I didn't know that. I just wanted to share this fun fact. Is this common knowledge? Am I just some kind of peasant or something? Is Are there people out there eating Glory on a daily basis? That just sounds metal as hell. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast, Deltre? Glory, as I always do. <laughs> Thank you for the fun fact. I'm about to look this up right now, as a matter of fact. Glory Foods Collard Greens are among the healthiest and most flavorful vegetables that you can eat. Rich in health-promoting nutrients, our collard greens help fight viruses, enhance lung health, and other heart protect and offer heart protection, increase brain function, and more. God, it's a superfood! That's right, you heard it here first. All you gotta do is consume five cans of Glory per day and you'll live forever. Oh, wow, thank you, Aggro. I'm so glad to know exactly how screwed I am. Ha ha ha. Plus magic minus luck. My unit has a 96.43% chance of having a gate speed or higher by level 8. I say again, has a 96 point what now? A 96.43% chance of being better than this. <sighs> Hey you, a 7 speed belongs to the bottom 4% amongst the space of all possible level A plus magic minus luck mail units when it comes to speed. God damn it. <laughs> Anticipation for long term rally spectrum bot hey you intensifies. We're getting to that point. We're getting to that point. Bonus points though if you can come up with the percent chance that this hey you would exist and dump tray would exist at the same time. Because that's gotta be infinitesimally small. We're talking like fractions of a percent at that point. And I just. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Also, I saw a few different people confused by what I meant by saying Lanku cop to feel when he was fighting Marth. Is that, is that like an American only phrase? It, it might be. It might be. I thought that that was more universal than that, but I suppose not. So, allow me to explain. Now, how should I put this very delicately? Lanku got a booby bump? Or like a, yeah, I, let's go with booby bump. That seems to be like the best way to possibly describe it. And I actually found the comic. This is what happens. He basically lands headfirst into Marth's chest. Uh, why would that matter? Who knows? It's, it's a mystery. But I, I think that's probably what they were going for. In Awakening proper, right? That's why Lan Ku lost, I assume. And lastly, because there seemed to be some kind of confusion about this. Fellas on, man. I appreciate the fact that you offered an apology. That was not the point, though. The, the point was... Okay, because, see, this is one of those funny things where people who have been watching me for a long time got a totally different interpretation from people who have been watching me for a much shorter time. <laughs> it's kind of funny to me, but I, I understand why. It's because in other parts of the fan base, you could make a point like I did and have the person be, like, 100% serious. Which is part of the joke, to be honest, but... <laughs> so we're clear. When I was talking about nitpickers, that was like 80% joke, 20% truth. Because, regardless of whether you agree with me or not, every single person, including the people that I was talking about, has the exact same story that I was describing. I guarantee. If you have been a part of this fan base for, let's say, six months, and you have actively tried to participate in any kind of discussion, you run across exactly what I was talking about. That's, that's the 20% truth part. The 80% joke part was me being super over the top. I <laughs> Just so we're clear. No, I don't hate people who nitpick. Come on now. I just pointed out because I think it would be better if we could laugh at ourselves. Honestly. And you might say, well, obviously, they, they must know that being nitpicky about everything is pointless. Well, if, if they knew that, then why would they do it? You know what I'm saying? So... That's why I even bring stuff like that up. I mean, we're just kind of taking for granted that absolutely everybody knows just how obnoxious that can be. That doesn't make you a bad person. It's just kind of grating, is all. And that was what the, that, that's what the joke was. Like, I don't care. Nitpick me all you want. Doesn't make a huge difference to me. Not really. So if you're thinking that I'm, like, sitting around stewing in my own rage or something like that, like, oh, man, I can't wait to record this part. And just, ooh, I'm going to go off. No. 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 <laughs> what kind of reaction is that? It was more to just make fun 
of some of the weirder quirks within Fire Emblem bands. That was literally the whole point. If you want to nitpick me to hell and back, sure, I'll take the YouTube engagement, sure, why not? So instead of getting super upset about that sort of thing, I just like to make fun of it, that's all. There's not really, there's no deeper meaning, nope, 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 nope. I just kind of like poking fun at the fan base that I'm a part of, that's all. So let's go ahead and get our barracks. Hopefully we can get some stuff. Now something interesting about this one, ooh, lots of stuff here. Something interesting about the items that you can get through the barracks in this game in particular though, is that they are actually sellable for actual monetary gain. You, you actually get stuff by selling these. Ooh, strength and skill for Donna Boy. That actually might help quite a bit, no lie, especially if I'm gonna try to train him. Okay, oh, more from Muriel. Give me a potion, a catharsis staff, what does that do? Hopefully it's pretty good. Dang, all of these solo ones today. My god, Muriel is so popular, look at that, three, three in a row. Three in a row. Muriel and Frederick. I don't know, I feel like that could actually be sort of decent though, because Muriel is made of wet tissue paper, right? She just falls over to everything. Oh, I should have done their support first. I doubt they'll get support points for this because they're still sitting at that C rank. And I said that as I was doing it. I had all the time in the world to correct myself, but chose not to because I am trash. Sumia and Frederick, let's go. Hello. Frederick, what are you doing up so early? Uh. Ha! Good morning, Sumia. I'm always up this early. <laughs> Three in the morning every day, in fact. I'm inspecting everyone's weapons and armor to ensure all is ready for battle. Huh? But it's not even dawn yet. Don't you ever sleep? No. What's that? <laughs> Did you <he just> say no? <laughs> no, Sumia, I'm actually... No, Sumia, my butler duties have actually evolved me beyond the point of needing silly things like sleep. I have sworn to serve Krom and the Shepherds to the best of my ability. As Commander Krom carries a burden far heavier than any of ours. It would ill behoove me to neglect any opportunity to lessen that load. He's fortunate to have you. Imagine getting up this early just to check gear. Well. I did not stir this morn simply to satisfy myself as our battle readiness. I also exercised, performed a number of weapon drills, and patrolled the camp. I also knitted this sweater and practiced the trombone. I then stoked the fire, ready the mi Oh my, he does everything! What can Frederick not do? I then stoked the fire, ready the makings for morning tea, and consumed one egg. Specifically one, no more, no less. Uh... Right. Oh! and I scared off a noisy flock of birds nesting too near my lord's tent. Then, with no other pressing task, I took the time to inspect our equipment. Good heavens. <laughs> Apologies, milady. You must find my prattle to be terribly dull. I have often been criticized for what some consider to be an excess of zeal. Such devotion appears to make my comrades uneasy. That was amazing! Well, I think it's wonderful. What? You do? You're the first person to ever say that to me! <laughs> Absolutely. You're an inspiration, Frederick. There's no other word for it. Like at all you do for Krom, it makes me wish I was more like you. I'm so sick of being the girl whose main contribution is falling on her face. Oh, don't you worry about that, Samia, because it is hilarious. I know we all need levity in these times, but I would still prefer to do more. My thanks. Why? Well, I, I don't know what to say. You're the first- <laughs> Really? <laughs> I was kind of joking there, Fred. You're the first person who's ever appreciated me. You just get me, you know? <laughs> You're the first person who's ever understood what I'm trying to do. Perhaps we should join a uh, perhaps we should join our causes to each other. We're gonna be the grease that keeps the shepherds running smoothly. Actually, that's not gonna be too far from the truth. Not with this, Sumia. Oh my lord. Now that is a splendid idea. Well that was nice. <laughs> Look at Sumia. Good girl Sumia. Uh we have Sully, Sumia, Muriel. Muriel and Sully. These two could not be more opposite. Muriel, just the girl I wanted to see. What? Greetings and salutations, Sully. No one has ever said that to me before. Are you in need of assistance? <laughs> a lot of firsts today. Yeah. You're an egghead, right? You like researching and investigating things. Yes. Why, yes. Unlocking the mysteries and wonders of the natural world gives me life. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Look, I have a favor to ask. Mm -hmm. You wish me to develop a new weapon, something of that ilk? Actually, I wanted you to check out this seaweed. I'm not so sure I'm doing this right. Oh, you fool, you're supposed to smoke it! I want you to study me. Uh, you. Well, that would be most unusual. I confess, I never had considered you as a possible field of research, but... Mm. Yeah, well, maybe it's time you consider it. You might have noticed that I'm not like other women, right? Right. If you are speaking of your martial prowess, then yes, it is a known quality. <laughs> oh, right. That. And some other stuff, too. 
Look, I just want you to figure out what's so different about me. I mean, I try to fit in, I really do, but something sets me apart. I see. You wish to me. You wish me to observe your social interactions and verbal communications. Two things that I excel at. In this way, I might see behavioral signifiers that differentiate you from the group norm. Hey. That is probably exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> probably. I didn't understand a word of that. I think. Hold a moment. I need time to prepare my queries and form a control group. Is this acceptable? <laughs> oh sure. Whatever you just said. Whatever it takes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I was kind of curious about that because they really are opposite in just every single way. So she's <laughs> literally asking Muriel to study her. I can just see Muriel standing over her bed with like a notepad in hand, just taking down notes, writing down everything there is to know about Sully. Oh, what are you doing, Muriel? I'm studying you, Sully and Sumia. That was there, doesn't that feel better? Your mane is all combed. No more tangles. Who's a good Pegasus? Huh? Oh, what? What's the Pegasus's name? Did she name it? Who's a good little Pegasus? <laughs> hey. Are you talking to that thing again? Yes. I like how she says that with such confidence. Why, yes I am. I've lost my damn mind. Hi, Sully. Hmm. You're spoiling the animal. She's practically died and gone to horse heaven. Huh? She does look happy, doesn't she? Yeah. Ah, oh, well, she's seen you safe through some terrible battles, so I suppose she's earned it. <laughs> You're quite fond of your horse, too, aren't you, Sully? Right. Hell yeah, I'm proud. Woo! <laughs> He's got smarts and guts. What more could a woman want? When you talk about him, you sound like a proud mother. Hmm? Oh, I'm not the maternal type. No. Well, that's going to be a problem. I thought that's what this game was all about, right? I thought we were here to play matchmaker. Strategy game, what's that? Even so, it's obvious how fond you two are of each other. Whenever you, pra whenever you praise him, he snores so happily. Oh, yeah? You notice that, huh? Most folks just assume he's some mindless beast. Oh, it's so nice to have someone to talk to about this sort of thing. Do you have a minute to talk more? Chat about Pegasi and the like? I mean, if you don't mind. I know you're very busy. I don't mean to intrude. Have some confidence, Sumio. Pfft, intrude. I could talk horses until the cows come home. Oh, thank you. Oh, she's blushing. Could this be the beginning of a beautiful relationship? Ooh. Oh, wonderful. Let me just put on some tea and we can... Hey. Hold it right there, girly. You just comb the horse top to bottom. You deserve a rest. You relax and put your feet up. I'll make the tea this time. Huh? Oh, I'm all right. Yeah. I'll be right back. <laughs> I've never seen Sully look so excited about anything. So they're going to bond over their horses. Well, that's just nice. Krom, you got to stay like a football field's length away from Samia. Let's, let's do chapter five. See, I say that like I want to. I say that like there's anything to gain from this other than... Oh. What is that catharsis step, anyways? Can Lisa use it? Oh, she also wants to rescue. No, she can't use it. a B rank. B. I'm not using that forever. Greatly restores the distant allies' HP, though. Oh, so it's like a men staff mixed with a physics staff. I got you. See, that can be pretty useful, but I'm probably just gonna sell it because I am broke. Okay, so of all the chapters that I am now looking forward to, this is definitely the biggest one. Chapter five: The Exalt and the King, or the bullshit and more bullshit. On top of using my rescue staff. God damn you, Riku! <laughs> ah, the Mad King Gangrel. What's this? What's this then? The Exalt herself and all her radiance. I don't know, I think it's the hand gesture that does it for me this time, but yeah, you, you would definitely sound like Iago did. I fear I must shield my eyes. <laughs> King Gangrel, I've come for the truth of this unfortunate incident between us. The truth. I can give you the truth. No, stay away from me, Aversa. Perhaps Milady might first share her name. You may call me Aversa. You may call me Aversa. <laughs> Very well, Aversa. Is Maravel unharmed? <laughs> Who? Oh, yes, the blonde little brat. God damn you, dude. I can't wait to kill him. You already know. I hate rescue missions. You're making me do a gang rule. You're making me do it. Unhand me, you gutter-born troglodyte! See, there's a word I need to start integrating into my vocabulary. Troglodyte. Maribel! <laughs> Alyssa, darling, is that you? <laughs> mm, this girl crossed the Plegian border without our consent. And what's more, she wounded the brave Plegian soldiers who sought only to escort her home safely. 
I think I started to slip into Camilla there a little bit. Not necessarily the most inappropriate thing ever, I guess. Oh. <laughs> I feel like Camilla needs to be just Camilla, though, right? <laughs> lies. You speak nothing but lies, hag. Did they not teach the meaning of the word truth in the wretched crone's school? <laughs> you see, no manners at all. Such a nasty little bird simply has to be caged. I don't like either of you, to be honest. <clears throat> Such a violent temper speaks to her guilt. This will call for a weighty punishment. If she were later to confess to being an Elysian spy, oh, my goodness. It would take an act of considerable good faith to repair our relations. I have done nothing wrong. It is they who should confess. They are the ones who invaded Elise. They raised an entire village. We know, Maribel. When I attempted to intervene, they took me and dragged me across the border. What were you going to do exactly? I was going to whack them good with my parasol. Let the plundered shops and charred homes of that village serve as my proof. That would only prove Elise has a bandit problem, something I fear oft of late. But indeed, tonight I shall weep salty tears into my pillow for your dead villagers. Salty indeed. Your grace, please. Yes. Peace, Maribel, I believe you. King Gangrel, I request that you release this woman at once. Surely you and I can sort out these affairs without the need for hostages. Oh? You don't know me very well, do you, M? Without so much as an apology, why should I even bother with Parley? I'm within my rights to have her head this instant and be home in time for supper. What? You black-hearted devil. Really? Control your dog, my dear, before he gets someone hurt. <clears throat> Ugh. Now then, your graceliness, perhaps we can arrange a trade. You give me the fire emblem and I return Mari Contrary here in one piece. Mari Contrary. Alright, that one went over my head. Is there a joke there? Some kind of pun? What am I missing? You would ask for Elise's royal treasure, but why? Mm -hmm. Because I know the legend! The Fire Emblem is the key to having all one's wishes realized. I have desired it for years, years! Yet my birthday comes and goes each year, and nothing from Elise. <laughs> Enough. The Emblem's power is meant for a single purpose, King Gangrel. To save the world and its people at their hour of most desperate need. Would you claim a more noble wish? I want what every Plegian wants, a grisly end for every last Elysian. What could be more noble than that? Gee, I don't know, dude. How about literally anything else? What? Really? Surely you have not it? forgotten what the last exalt did to my people. Your father named us heathens. His crusade across Plegia butchered countless of my subjects and my kin. <sighs> I have never denied Elise's past wrongdoings. But I have sworn to never repeat those mistakes. Ours is now a realm of peace. You're an Yours is now a haven of hypocrisy! Now give me the Fire Emblem! Okay, dude, do you have 35 bucks? 35?! This game is six years old! Don't look at me, look at Nintendo. No. It's never coming down in price. No, Your Grace. I'd sooner die than act as a bargaining chip for this filthy reprobate. Wow, Maribel and Muriel should hang out. I feel like they would get along. <laughs> no, Maribel. They just seriously, they just sit back and forth trying to one-up each other. Each of them a thesaurus in hand. Ugh, talk, 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 talk. It's time to speak louder than words. This negotiation is over, your luminosity. I shall have the emblem if I have to pry it from your shiny dead hands. Oh, my hands aren't quite shiny. Thank you for noticing. That was not a compliment. Okay, bring it on. Crime, you're a little bit under leveled for this. Did you forget this is lunatic? Oh, okay, never mind. He can just one shot these guys. Where is that crime, huh? What happened here? Why don't I have that guy on my team? Stay back, or you all suffer the same fate. Actually, I'm fine. Oh, shit. Now, that's a declaration of war if I've ever heard one. A big, messy war that will bleed you Elysians dry. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case, necessarily. I thought Plegia was supposed to be much worse off. So, if anything, it would be the opposite. Not that Gangrel's exactly a great king or anything, but hey. I do like how they touched on the fact that Elise was actually sort of at fault for these tensions between the two countries, right? Because the previous exalt, M's daddy, 
basically ran them dry. They basically ran a crusade all throughout Plagia. So yeah, probably not on the greatest of terms, these two nations. Which is interesting. You're not just goody-goody two-shoes here. Your, your side does have some fault in all of this. There's no denying that. But Gangrel is a mustache twirler, man! <laughs> it's fine. He's not the main villain, I promise. Probably. Poor stupid girl. Are you really worth fighting a war over? Years from now, you'll be remembered only as she who destroyed House Elise. No. No, that's not. Oh, Lissa, please, no. Yeah, very likely. Very, very likely. Uh. Huh? <laughs> Maribel, go, you're free. Rickon, what are you doing here? With your speed stat? I know, I know, but just, just run. We can talk about it later. Oh, is this your little boyfriend? Isn't he just precious? Don't talk down to me. Witch? See, that's what I'm saying. Well, I guess Rickon says that an awful lot. I wonder why. Ugh, wind magic. We fight together. Come on, Mirabelle. Yes. Right. Left. We're going left, actually. Oh, okay then. You little. Wretched whelp. I should. No, our soldiers had them outnumbered. The brats will be dead long before they can reach their comrades. And uh, if we don't do something about that, she ain't wrong. This map blows. This map blows. <laughs> so as best as I can tell, there's exactly one way to beat this map on Lunatic, and that would be to put Frederick right here with a sword and have him do the majority of the fighting against these wyverns. Yes, we are now facing wyvern riders. Could be worse. I haven't figured out how just yet, but trust me, it could definitely be worse. That aside, though, the other thing is that all of these guys basically rush you right off the start. Not not all at once, not in one big group, but they, they basically come in waves, right? On turn one, certain enemies will move, then on turn two, certain enemies will move, and so on and so forth. They don't really hold any kind of formation, they just kind of charge you. And that's one thing that should have probably been changed about this game, just across the board. There should be less scenarios where the enemy just comes at you in one gigantic group. Or they should just come at you less frequently. You should have to be the ones coming to them. A lot more frequently, I think. It's just better strategy that way, honestly, because that means that you have to sort of triumph over something, you know what I mean? You have to sort of figure out how to break the enemy on your own that way, but if they're just coming at you anyways, then you, you basically have to scramble to deal with them in a very different way, in a very different way. At that point, if they're all charging you, you just need to be able to kill them very quickly, as opposed to outwitting them. If that makes sense. Kind of hard to describe if you don't have like a back-to-back -back example, but if you want to see what I'm talking about and you happen to own, say, Conquest, play a few maps in Conquest and play a few maps in Awakening. You'll see what I mean very quickly, I assure you. One kind of good thing about this map is that we start seeing Dark Mages and they suck. They really suck. Yeah, a lot of them have Nosferatu, too. But on the other hand, they have 7 speed, which means even Hey You, even Hey You, if paired up with Lon Koo, can double attack them. I know, right? Some kind of glitch, perhaps? No, no, this is actually the truth. Alright, man, I say let's just give this a shot. Now, I did actually forge up Virion's bow by two points, because I had the money after selling that catharsis step. And some of those keys that I've been sitting on, because I don't think I'll really need those. Not really. So he got that up by plus two, which actually gives him just enough overall power to kill some of these wyverns if Krom hits them first. So we might be doing that trying to feed some experience to Virion. I guess we're just going to see. <sighs> Alright, here come these clouds. <clears throat> I have my war! Captain Orton, remain here and take down as many Elysians as you can. You can expect reinforcements from the forts as well. Now do your best at doing your worst. <laughs> Please don't. Yep, it's time for reinforcements. And in Fire Emblem Awakening, they are same turn. Meaning that they get to attack you as soon as they show up. Now, he didn't really say when they're going to show up, but... I think it's like turn 3 or turn 4, they start popping in from the forts, so we need to ideally block off some of them so that we don't get smacked around. Okay, so we have these two guys up here, these clowns. Uh, we can talk about them in a second, I guess, but we, we gotta focus on saving them without a doubt. Look at this spot that they started. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can actually do it without the rescue staff, though. If we have Fred pop this guy right now. Goodbye. He can just do that because of the strength tonic that we gave him. 
And if I have Hey You pop this guy for 17, that's pretty good damage. That's pretty darn good damage right there. No Muriel follow-up, of course. Oh, excuse me. Let me get these animations. Oh, finally! There we go. Yes, Hey You! Hey You, that's my girl. Oh, good lord. Oh, good lord. She's almost back to average speed. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. She should have about 10. But, we definitely take those. Now, Rickon can actually... Hold on for a second because of the uh, whole animations thing. Yeah, let's get let's get those on. It's just gonna be the one map today, so why not? I'm probably gonna turn Fred's off though if I'm keeping it a buck because he's gonna be killing a lot of stuff. Now, as I was starting to say about Rickon, right? So he is like Muriel, but much worse <laughs> because he has five base speed. I don't know if you caught that or not, but uh, five base speed leaves him doubled by everything, every last thing, all of the things. Hit point, strength, skill. Who me up? Who me up? The pain train keeps rolling, man. She just, she's gonna get strength every time, huh? Like without fail. She's just never going to fail to get that stat, and that is just so beautiful. I love this girl. Is there anybody who was watching this though that said, "Oh man, the flyer jig"? There's somebody Delta will never use. <laughs> I certainly hope not. Not by this point. Now, how real are we feeling? I'll get back to Rickon in a second, but we gotta. We gotta figure our chances here for a sec. So if Krom is paired with you, you have a very low chance to hit me on a forest tile. Ooh, do we go for the YOLO? Let's go for the YOLO one time. If it bites me in the ass, so be it. Sumia's just gonna get a perfect level up again. It doesn't matter. It's Sumia. Now, we're gonna put these guys on the forest and let Lan Q do as Lan Q does. So right there, you can wait in place. The thing is, it's kind of hard to separate these guys because if I... I mean, I could pull this one Barbarian over this way, I guess. If I had needed to, but... This guy actually didn't get any dodge avoiding... Uh, this guy didn't actually get any dodge reducing skills, so that's... Kind of where I'm at. And by, by dodge, I mean avoidance. They can have what is essentially Heartseeker from Fates. They can't have it, neither of them do. Wow. Yeah, here we go. This Hex reduces a Void by 15 for all adjacent enemies. And that can be very dangerous for Lan Ku, without a doubt, because he relies solely on dodging. Although he does still take a hit from this Woods tile, technically speaking. It's just that anything else will kill him in combination with that, so we'd rather avoid it, for uh, obvious reasons, I assume. Now, I, I believe we were starting to talk about Rigan, right? So he... is just a worse version of Muriel. Yeah, he has twice the defense, but he also has half the speed. Now, I'm no expert. I'm certainly no expert. But it would seem to me that if everything is doubling you, you're actually not twice as bulky, now are you? <laughs> he also has much worse resistance, which is something else that's kind of a sticking point for this guy. Doesn't really help him take on these mages very well. In fact, he will most likely be the target from this guy, but that's okay, because I'm just going to pair him with uh, Maribel. I'm just going to pair them up and have them run away. Mostly because these freaking Wyvern Knights all Zerg rush you at the start of the map, so... This is basically a gigantic danger zone. Everybody around this fort must be able to handle these wyverns in one way or another. Uh, that said, finishing up with Rickon, if you can put up with the fact that he has no speed to speak up, then I suppose he's serviceable. But he's certainly worse than Muriel in every possible way. And Muriel's already worse than Hey You, so... That leaves you with no less than two mages who are just strictly better than this guy. I know there are Rickon fans. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, man. But he's definitely the worst mage. He's without a doubt the worst mage in the game. Not any kind of competition, no contest. Man, these always get me sketchy. Wow, that's bad. Lan Ku, my dude, you gotta kill some of these guys. This is why we put you out here. Ooh, not a bad level up though. Better indeed. Now, if he wants to crit this guy, that'd be cool. If he wants to crit anybody or even dodge this guy potentially, no, no, why would we? Why would Krom follow up either? This is looking very bad. I mean, it's 30%, not very likely. What did I say, Lanku? I said not very likely. See, you're making yourself out to be a terrible unit here. You can't get good help these days. Fools, all of you. Every last one. Every last one. See, Krom gets it. God damn. The thing is, if I actually want to save dang old Rickon and Maribel up there, I gotta send Fred this way. I, I straight up have to. Have to. Ah, pretty decent. Pretty decent. 
So here's where all the good level ups are, apparently. At the very end of her leveling curve. Thank you. Thank you so much, AU. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think we were just about done talking about Rickon, though. He's... He could be better. Most certainly. Now, Maribel, on the other hand, is basically just Lisa on a horse. Naturally. Naturally. <laughs> she really is. She's just Lisa on a horse. So that's not really a terrible thing to be... Uh, that said, there's a few times when Lisa just straight up has an advantage because... It's not always the best thing in the world to be on horseback in this game. There's a few times, namely things like desert maps, which we'll be seeing a few of pretty soon here, where it can be to your advantage to be non-mounted as a magical user. And in, in cases like that, Liz is just strictly superior. However, for the most part, Maribel gets the job done. She has better movement, which is the main thing, so it's generally easier for her to keep up with a lot of your units. Uh, we're not going to throw Lanku out there again like we did on the first time. That didn't work out too well, so we're going to try something a little bit more like this, I suppose. Uh, all things considered, though... Ooh, nice, Sully! That's what I'm talking about. That's why I gave her the Killer Lance this time, because I realized that she could, for one. <laughs> Ooh, Krom. Hell yeah. We're looking really good right here. Uh, statistically, though, Maribel pretty solid. Much unlike that level up, Lanku! What was that? Anybody else see the guy with like 60, 70% speed growth not get it? Just me? Okay. Uh, overall though, Maribel, decent enough. Decent enough. Lissa, probably a little bit better overall, just because you've had her for longer, right? And especially if you're somebody who likes to always make sure that you're getting every last possible heal on every last map. Then Lissa will probably be like level 6, 7, maybe even level 8 by this point. Uh, ours is only level 4 because we haven't fielded her every single time. But if you did, she would most certainly start to shine a little bit by this point. More so than Maribel, who's basically starting from scratch. Uh, in a run like this, or like if you're playing like I am sort of, then they're, they're about equal. They're about equal, honestly. You don't really need healers like that. Not as much as you would think you would. Nice dual attack. Now, if we dodge, which we do, he's done for. He's done for! Be silent. Exactly. Quiet! I'm trying to explain Maribel here. <laughs> She's alright, though. I think that's just about the most I could say about her. I do appreciate the fact that she brings a men's stab with her, though. That's certainly a huge step up from the healing stick that we've been dealing with since forever. I reckon, though, for as much crap as I've been giving him, his chip here is going to be really nice. 88% chance to land this. That's pretty good, too. Fairly accurate shot. And we nail him. We nail him. Which is just about perfect. Now, how are we giving this to Donnie? Pretty easily, in all seriousness. Now, at this point, we're also going to pair these two. Looks like we won't need any extra aid, so I don't see why we wouldn't do that. I can even have Hey You pull away this Nosferatu guy. And Muriel can double him. Yeah, Muriel can do so much to that guy. And we're going to have her do exactly that. Yeah. So we'll pair these two. Switch over to Freddy, who has the Iron Sword now. And we want him to have that so that he doesn't get hit by these guys, obviously. And he won't. In all honesty, he likely will not. So we can do like that. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. So right here for Hey You. Switch it on over to Muriel. If anything, I want to take the shot with Virion. Yeah, because he'll possibly level up. I think these guys should give him 12. Lanku may even jump in. I prefer he didn't. Nope, no level up, but that's okay. Donnie boy, though. Running through the six with the 90% accuracy shot. Let's go, buddy. That's what I wanted to see. That's exactly what we needed to see. That's going to be a level up for sure. Yup. Easy, easy, easy. He's getting more speed, so that's good. Now he's exactly as fast as Rickon, which is my biggest problem with this kid, honestly. It shouldn't be... It shouldn't be like that, man. Certainly not. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Donnie actually got strength from the barracks. So no wonder he's doing so much damage. I was going to say, 13 seems like an awful lot. Like, he's not terrible, but that's still well over what I would have expected from him. Let's just unpair Mirabel so that we can get some healing on the next turn easily and possibly still end up using Rickon if we need to. I wasn't watching those incoming wyverns too, too closely now. Oh. Exactly, you, you goof. Actually, truth be told, Luna kind of sucks in the early parts of the game. 
Sumia, on the other hand, is awesome. Hell yeah. This is exactly why there's such a power couple like that. She just takes him out. She just takes him right on out. Now that no sky should almost certainly go for Muriel. Almost certainly. With Sumia giving Frederick... Yeah, yeah, they'll go for Muriel for sure. Sumia's giving too much res to Fred. And he's on it for it, so there's no way. And that's exactly what we want, because we need to get some of that sweet, sweet, juicy experience. Is this guy even gonna hit? No. Trash! 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 Pretty sure Fred just straight up takes these guys out with an iron sword, which is very unlikely to say the least. Our Fred is just so damn strong. At least something good came of all of this. We definitely take those. He's probably going to level up by the time this map is over. I say probably. He's certainly going to level up by the time this map is over. I assure you. Ah, Muriel. Oh. Oh, wow. He actually knew. I was going to say, wait, I'm full of crap because of, uh... Nosferatu healing him back up a little bit. But nope, nope, nope. What are odds? What are statistics? Now, this is a little bit of an annoying spot now, isn't it? Wouldn't you say? Uh, I could have Frederick take this guy out, but I really, I don't want to, but if he doesn't, then how do I advance? Just Samia by chance? No, no, nope, 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 nope. Frederick it is. Yeah, he's just perched in too annoying of a position. I can't get up to him with anybody else. And he's checking literally everybody. And I really want to put somebody on that fort over on the left. Because I'm pretty sure, as we saw in the intro, just about any time now, there's going to be some nice reinforcements coming through the six to really mess me up let's let's do it let's have one group try and go around the left hand side and i will put virion in range of this archer against my better not archer but uh this mage against my better judgment to be honest we can repair these two in fact let's let's go ahead and give her the elwind right now she should have that if anything because that's a way better spell way more accurate and it's stronger than the fire now i gotta worry about the rest of these clowns if anything, obviously we want to have Lon Koo head this way. Because he can help out with you. I'll even drop off Krom. I don't know if that's really smart or not. Yup, here they come. Thank God he showed up in the middle of the map. Okay, I was I was sort of fearful that he would show up on that eastern port. Which would be the worst possible outcome. Ooh, we can actually kill him. Nice. Nice. That was sweet. Hell yeah, Donald. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, oh my god, we gotta win. We gotta win. Are you seeing this? Look at Virion. Dude's gotten speed as many times as hey you. Facts. Yeah, he did have a hand axe. I thought it was supposed to be a bandit of some kind. Ooh, look at these dual strikes coming through. That's very useful for me, without a doubt. And I don't know who this guy thinks he is, but uh It's not gonna end too well for you, bud. I kill this one with Mira, oh, with Muriel. Oh god, that's gonna be so confusing. <laughs> but if I killed this guy with Muriel, I can heal Hey You with Maribel, and then Sully could drop Hey You on this fortress, pulling this guy to me now, which might be something to do. Maybe, possibly. I don't know. <laughs> Remembering all these reinforcements is gonna be what kills me, because it's kind of important that we don't. And like, naturally, we don't want them to catch us off guard, right? I don't want to spread myself too thin, though, either. I just realized this guy can technically just destroy me. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Lanku a little bit weak on the defensive side. Not gonna lie, bud. Ah, now here's a problem I've just fully processed. Man, that was supposed to be a kill for Donnie, but I, I actually, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that because you don't kill, and we don't have any way to boost our strength. We'll take Rickon, and we'll also take the fire spell. Who had the fire? Rickon had the fire, right. So we'll trade these two right now. And kill this guy with Muriel, 98% of the time anyway, surely. Oh, he's going to drop a hand axe, hell yeah. We need we need more range, man. We definitely need more one to two. Well, I feel edified. She feels edified, she says. Okay. Okay. Am I in danger by leaving this guy alive? In fact, I don't even have to really leave him alive, though, do I? And not only that, but Sumia actually wrecks them. So, what I should in reality be doing is this, I think. 
I, I still should have attacked with Virion, thinking about it, but by doing this, we can get more experience on Samia, which is all that matters, I thought. That's what we're here for, right? Kills for Samia? I thought so. And we will drop Heyu on the fortress. She's fine. She's not getting doubled. Worst case scenario, something spawns from the bottom left right now. I mean, it's certainly a possibility. But hopefully that's not what happens. And... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I can't do that anyways. Oh, what a waste of time. What am I doing? That was never a move because of this guy. Yeah, what am I doing? What am I doing? Is there some other place that... No, that was right in his range. Damn. Yeah, that was a huge mistake. That was a huge misplay. Yeah, wow, that's that's just not good. Two more! Wow. Are they going to start moving now? That's kind of my fear right here. All right, Lon, Lon Q takes a million. There we go, Krom. Now that is a kill for Virion if I've ever seen it. I'm thinking that Sumia can just two-shot this guy with the javelin, though, right? Frederick, my man! He doesn't even have the dual guard plus yet. He must think he does. He must think he does. That's a level up for Sumia, though. For show. Uh-oh. What are the chances that... Oh, very good. Very, very good. Never mind. Abort! Yeah, can cancel that, Captain. We're not going that way. Nope, nope, nope. On the other hand, we can put Sumia here, and then on the next turn, we can actually fly Fred up the cliff because of Sumia being awesome. And that's another level up for her. Can she go seven for seven on strength? Or six for six? No, okay. Only defense resistance. Fine, I guess. She's only got 20 speed is all, basically. Pretty average, all things considered, but I guess Sumia... I mean, if you want to be just okay. All right, so change of plans. You're going to stand right here with the Elwind. Yeah, with the Elwind. And hey, you can do some damage right there, right now. Let's go ahead and drop off Krom, too. This is where he comes in. This is for sure where Krom comes in. 91% of the time, this is a good move. Come on, Danny boy. Get him out of there. Nice. I mean, yeah, sure, everything one rounds it, but if he doesn't have to take a hit, he's pretty good, huh? Huh? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Just for the experience, let's bring back Muriel. That's gonna mess me up so bad. It really is. But we can do like that. Even drop off Rickon in case for some reason I've screwed up horribly and we need the damage. <gasps> no, no, that Myrmidon can kill me! Oh, no, he can't. No, he can't. And nothing else is in range. So, Soli, this would be an awful, awful time to jump in. No. Oh, God. Look at <laughs> I'm shook. Somehow we're not going to die from this, though. Oh, wait. We just might. We just might. Uh-oh. Well, I still... I can throw a javelin at this guy. Shoot on him with somebody. No, we can we can pull this back. We can definitely pull this back. God, see, this is what I'm talking about with chapter 5. You just get swarmed from everywhere. Everywhere, dude. Look at all these wyverns. Which means, okay, we're watching this guy, basically. This is the guy right here that we need to worry about. So, if anything at all, we definitely bring back Hey You. That part, I think, is pretty safe. So let's do that right now. Get her all the way back to 22. She still can't take another hit from these guys, though, I'm pretty sure, right? Oh, she could, in theory. And Krom does for a fact, right? I'm not just tripping. Oh, my. It's so close, but he does. I mean, Sumia may kill... Oh, right, of course. One of you guys reminded me that if I'm trying not to kill things with dual attacks, I should be unequipping the partner. I should be unequipping whoever's in the back pocket. Which, yeah, of course. Hello, where's my break? I think it's just because I played Fate so recently. And in that game, that was just not a concern. It was it was never something to think about. And I, I try to remember to do it where I can, but it's it's not always a possibility, because I'm kind of dumb, you see. Muriel, though, has a pretty good shot of killing this guy. Yeah! And a level up for the Robot Queen. Let's go. Skill luck, what is this? Propitious growth, if I may say so. No, Muriel, you may not. 
You may not say so. She would just deal more damage straight up, so if she were the one to be attacked, that would be fine. From where I'm standing. So we get 24 to you. Krom can actually kill something, which is great. And he can survive. Which is the bigger part about all this. Like, I didn't somehow have more damage. I'm so sure he didn't. So, we're good. We are absolutely good. If anything, I actually think he deals less damage. I think the reinforcements are actually slightly weaker. Yeah, he's a little bit under level, but that's one thing that's kind of good about Krom, right? He gets bonus damage versus dragons, including wyverns, so that's pretty nice. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Goodbye. See, it was worth it after all. He's actually leveling up quite fast. One or two more of those, man. Yeah, Donnie boy, you gotta get out of here. Head back to the rest of your group, man. Head on over there. Why am I in range of the fort still? I must be bad. I must be bad. No reinforcements, though. God bless. God bless. This guy's actually gonna survive because the javelin's about to break. So, there's always that. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. No biggie. They do attack at you. Presumably because... No, they can't even crit her. I wonder why then. I wonder why. Well, we definitely take those. Now, do I dare go for another level up? And hope for speed again? Or do I just... I, I don't know. I actually don't know. In fact, I see a way to make this work. So let's... Yeah. Fred can actually move over here. And then I can just take Sumia away from him. In fact, I could have just dropped her off if I were any good, but hey. Virion attacks you. Right? Yeah! And we can get a level up on him right now. Which we desperately need, so make no mistake, it's gotta be good. And it is. <laughs> He's actually turning out to be pretty sweet. Yeah, his stats are actually really good. Well, I say really good. They're about the median, though. Like, no lie, this is about the average unit at this point. Except he's actually much lower level than you, hey you. What are you doing? I just want to kill those wyverns with other people, and I think that this may cause the last remaining enemies to move, perhaps? I'm not entirely sure. Level up for Maribo, though, hey. Yeah, not too bad. So everybody, up the mountainside, you go. He's still gonna die to Fred. Why is Fred so strong? <laughs> well, we did our best. Of course, those wyvern riders are gonna get smacked around. There's the A rank, so now Fred got plus three to his, uh, plus three total damage from his sword. Basically. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, he's as strong as if Sumia were paired with him now. Because Sumia does give a point of strength. Just seeing as to how she's so damn strong. Here's two kills for whoever I want, though, which is all I'm worried about, really. Ooh, nice one, Krom. No level up for you, though. Nah. No night fears the slow but steady road. Aptly put. Yeah, here comes the rest of these guys. At which point, it's time to repair, I'm thinking. <laughs> 30, 28, 28. Okay. Well, unless something spawns, I mean, we should be fine. At the very least, we get a kill on Krom and hey, you. That's kind of what's going to happen here, I'm thinking. One for you, level up. Yes. One for Krom, level up. And Krom can pair with Lan Ku. Oh god, she's trying to redeem herself. She's actually gonna do it, huh? Solidarity, what's that now? Grants plus 10 crit slash critical avoid to all adjacent allies. Whenever the game says dodge, it means crit avoid. Basically. Avoid means just, like, evasion. And dodge is crit avoid. In case there's any confusion about that. Stay out of your way. But other than that, let's stand right here with the Iron Sword once again. Pretty sure I gave a Vulnerary to Samia for just such an occasion. Very little chance that I actually need it, but just to be on the safe side. Right. Seems to make sense. Crom right here. And take him out. Take him out of my hair. I'd be really shocked if anything could actually take out Frederick from where he's at. That would be very surprising, to say the least. Let's go Krom, straight. Oh, more speed though. Ooh, he, oh, he actually doubles these wyverns now. That's what I'm talking about. More of that. 
Well, let's just keep having Maribel grind up, I guess, basically. That's all she's doing, really. Not like I need the health on Virion for something. Yeah, they're gonna go for Fred. We knew that. I won't ask your name. Only your life. Not a chance, bud. Not a chance, bud. Yeah, these guys are just hopeless. 19 times, too. Frederick is just such a god, though. Why is this fair? And his wife is just as crazy. Oh, yeah, you already knew that was happening. With how good she is and how good he is. Oh, yeah, this is the dynamic duo right here. We can't even be crit, so we're looking good. We can be smacked around for all of our life, though. Jesus Christ, hey, you. She's still getting so much experience, though. It, this is exactly the thing with... Uh, veteran. She's getting 15 points just for fighting anything at all. On top of being one of the better people to fight things still, because she's fairly bulky compared to the rest of my team. Almost 30 HP is kind of a lot at this point. Uh, now, Fred, bud, do you double this guy? I think you don't. You actually don't. Ruh -roh. Let's give it to Heyu. She's actually turning around a little bit. To the point that if I gave her a speed wing, she might actually start to be pretty decent. Now, granted, there's only one, and I don't know when, but I'd still like to get her promoted before, like, the first deserts start rolling around, so we'll see if we can't make that happen somehow. And again, we, we would rather them attack Heyu over anybody else because she can at least retaliate on this guy, and they will not be attacking Frederick, I guarantee. Uh, I'm so sure of that, in fact, that it only makes sense to attack the mage because I can't retaliate on him. Yeah. Makes sense to me. So we dig this guy out of our hair right now. Even if he hits, he does basically nothing because Sumia, the beast that she is, is giving me a billion res. Yeah, get him out of there right now. This guy comes for Hey You. These two take damage on Sumia. Sumia then kills them on the enemy face, and we are done. Assuming no bullshit. Like something coming from right here, right now. Okay. Of course, Frederick will just kill this brigand, but he won't kill the Myrmidon unless we get a dual attack. Which we could, I guess. I mean, look at this. What beasts? Maybe letting them take the forest was not the smartest possible move. I don't know. But I'm thinking this one's a done deal. I certainly am. Yep, go for Heyu. Take about half. He has pretty good damage. She might even level up from this. Ah, so close. Do I? Do we go for another one? Take you on out of here. Get out of my sight. This is Sumia. I don't know if you've heard, but she's unbeatable. God, and I had my doubts about her on Lunatic, but oh god, how I take them all back. Every last doubt completely dispelled. Look at her. Her stats are insane, actually. What? This is the avatar right there. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, let's just give it to Heyu. She managed to turn this around in her favor quite a bit. Sorry, Maribel, we got better things to do than see your animations, as beautiful as they may be. Uh, if I actually miss, though, I'm very dead. I'm actually dead on the spot if that happens. No, I'm not. I can get Virion up there still. Okay, phew. So let's go for it. Yeah, let's do it. Go, go. On. Get out of here! Now, if you wanted to go three for three on speed, this matters not. Soon war will be upon your soil. <laughs> As will your body. Makes for good fertilizer right here. Now, speed, 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 speed. Ah! Well, let's be honest. She was never hitting three in a row. She might almost be back to average, though. Maybe. I, I don't know. Could be. Could be. Maribel, what do you have to say for yourself? You know, I gotta be honest, I don't think that that was as bad as I remember. Maybe it's because I actually have a team this time and not just Frederick plus Robin, so that might help a little bit in all honesty, but I, I genuinely remember that map being a lot more painful than that. Surely I'm not the only one, come on! But the crazy part about this is it's actually gonna get so much easier from this point on, so that is just so good for me. That's just so good for me, man. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I feel like we're doing pretty okay on our team, though. Virion's actually all the way up to level 6 somehow. And he was actually kind of helpful there against the Wyverns. It didn't have to be Virion, but 20-something damage in one hit is no joke. 
And if I have any luck, Krom's actually going to be doubling Wyverns for a while now, so that's... Yeah, we're not looking too bad, I feel. Hopefully this luck can continue a little bit. I don't know, I guess we're just going to have to see. Maribel, are you hurt? My humble thanks. Nothing I didn't return twofold, darling. You are a staff user. My parasol of death surely taught them a lesson. I'm glad you're safe. <sighs> Who are you? It's fine, people forget me all the time. Oh, it's you. Oh. Yes, I know you're not especially fond of me, but it's a relief just the same. I'm so overtaken with joy. Oh, it's not a question of fondness. I'm simply protective of Lissa. My treasure is very sensitive and... Wait, am I really justifying myself to a commoner? Gods, you're so far beneath me. I, Maribel the Great. Yes, well, and I do apologize for being a... Oh, oh! I do apologize for being Kurt. Yes, of course. And, and... My gratitude. And you have my thanks for your part in the rescue. There, I said it. Bullet dodged. Phew. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive me, Em. I acted rashly. It's all right, Krom. King Gangrel is the one at fault here. You are only protecting me. Shall we then? The Mad King will be rallying his forces if they have not mobilized already. I suggest we make haste back to Elistal and discuss our strategy. Of course, Frederick. It seems war is upon us. We must protect the Elysian people at all costs. War in a Fire Emblem game, eh? Who would have seen it coming? Surely not I. But... For the time being... Do we get the next paralogue? We actually do. Alright, so we're doubling up next time. But, for the time being, that is going to do it for me. So we knocked out Chapter 5 today. Not too bad on that one. I think we did a pretty darn good job. Oh, we can buy wind spells. Cool. I might have to do that. We actually got that bullion. Let me sell that. How much money do we have to play with here now? A good amount. 5,000. Yeah, it's not so bad. Not bad. Anyways, all that said, next time we're going to do Chapter 6. And we're also going to do this paralog more likely than not. Yeah, it's it's Anna's paralog. Hell yeah. We can, we can do that for sure. Anyways... Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a like rating. It helps me out tremendously, guys. The amount of support on this one has been just absolutely astounding, guys. And I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts as well. And I will catch you guys on the next one. See you then. Peace.